Hey there, Kyle with uh, DK Adventure Co. here. Today we've got a camping gear review. This is the Nemo Aurora three-person tent. This is not sponsored content. I bought this tent with my own money to uh, review today. So hashtag not SponCon. This tent comes in at six pounds, eight ounces all in. Uh, that translates to 2.95 kilograms. Inside the floor space, you've got 44 square feet of floor space. That's 4.1 square meters. So the exact dimensions are 88 inches by uh, 72 inches inside of there. This tent retails for 359 US dollars. And uh, I'll tell you my thoughts and I'll show you how to pitch it today. So first, let's take a look at what comes in the bag and then I'll show you how to pitch it. So here is the stuff sack that the tent and everything comes in. As you can see, it's a, it's a pretty big boy. So I'm gonna open it up and show you all uh, what comes inside of it. This is everything emptied out of the stuff sack. Here we've got the footprint down below. This is the tent. Back here is the rain fly. Got a stuff sack that comes with these stakes. It's got a little bit of cordage for you for tying it down and uh, it's got a small uh, patch kit that comes with it. Also, there's a stuff sack for the poles. So it's uh, got two sections of pole. We've got one big pole for the frame and another short one for the roof. And then we've got a little uh, pole repair uh, tool. And then here's the stuff sack. Inside in the stuff sack, the instructions are very clear to follow. And Nemo puts these little uh, constellation um, charts on all of their tents, so that's kind of cool. Let's go ahead and uh, pitch all this. I'll show you step by step how you pitch this guy. All right, first you find a suitable flat piece of ground to pitch your tent, and first thing you will grab is the footprint. So just put the footprint down on the ground. Flat it out. Check that there's no rocks, roots, whatever. It's there. Okay, I've got the tent. So this has these helpful grommets. So each of these little grommets lines up with the grommet on the footprint. Um, so these are really helpful. It's on the fly as well. You have this grommet system. So you just. Up. All right, now we've got the tent poles. So you want to just uh, get your tent poles set up. This one kind of uses a double wheel and spoke system. So there's a, a hub that goes on foot end of the tent and a similar hub that goes on the back end of the tent. The tent is completely symmetrical. So there's not a head end versus a foot end. You can face it either way that you want. Once you've got your poles extended, you're just gonna take a pole and put it down in the grommet. So just line up the grommet on the tent and align that with the footprint. So do that on all four sides. Get your tent structure. Okay, we've got all four corners aligned. We've got one more pole. And that's a short one here. Uh, go ahead and expand that, but we're not gonna need that until we raise the tip. So get your hooks here, identified with the fluorescent straps, and those just go up over your poles. So there's one for the middle, and then two on each corner. And same thing on the other side. Okay, and then get your hooks in the middle. Okay. 
and this is where your roof expansion pole comes in. So this one goes over top of the tent and uh, its purpose is going to be to give you that headroom and spread the sides up. So it goes on top of the arch here, not below. Be sure you put it on top or else it's not gonna stay in place. So you put it on the grommet over here. There's a grommet on either side above the doors. Stay in place, you kind of just run around. I hope it stays in place. Okay, that, that is the basic tent pitch here. This is a freestanding tent, so notice I didn't stake it down because once you've got these grommets lined up, you can move the whole tent around and reposition it if you'd like before you stake it down. And if you are confident that it's not going to rain or have any precipitation over the evening, you could just, you know, have it down like this, put some rocks on it, and spend the night looking up at the stars. But uh, I always think you should be extra, extra sure of that if you're gonna camp that way. So let's go ahead and stake it down and then we'll get the rain fly on. So these are the uh, tent stakes it comes with. I don't like those. I'm gonna use some red ones. These are Odo Lands. They are kind of a knockoff of the MSR Groundhog Steaks, oh, yeah. but uh, a little bit cheaper. And I much prefer these. I'll uh, chat on that when I'm reviewing the tent after it's set up. All right, we've got the tent stakes securely down. Time to get the rain fly on. So first, you know, pull your rain fly out. The Nemo logo is going to be facing out. So this is the outside of the, of the fly. So it's uh, pretty simple to line up. This also has the grommets that you find around the four corners of the tent. So flap it over. So underneath each of these corners, there are a couple uh, places with Velcro. If you fasten it now, before you tension the rain fly, it's gonna make it a lot easier to secure it. So go ahead and secure those while it's still loose. So do that around all four corners. It's about keeping your rain fly aligned over your poles so that it doesn't touch the mesh on the inside and drag any condensation down there. All right, then you take your grommets on all the rain flies and you go down here to the ground where your poles are. So your tent and your footprint should be down there. So pick it up a little bit and just slip this grommet underneath and line it up and do that with all four sides. All right, so on each of these, there's also these little buckles. Now that you've got it secured, you can pull these tight. That's how you tension the fly on each of the corners. I'm not gonna do that yet. Actually, next step is we're gonna stake out the vestibule and uh, get it pulled top before we go around and tension everything. Get your stakes again. You'll need two stakes for the vestibule. On each of the doors, there's this uh, pre-tied knot that comes in the package and it's got these loops. So that's gonna be where you put your stake. So just pull it out taut. I like to Loosen it so that you can pull it tighter once your uh, vestibule is staked down. So no need to worry if it's not totally taut as soon as you put it down. So get it in the ground there. So let's go ahead and pull that tight. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. Okay, pull it tight. And then your final touch will be go around and tension all four corners. And this should, if you did everything right, it should pull your seams uh, right along the poles on each of the four corners. Yeah, this port I found out was definitely um, important because if you don't pull these taut, this part of the fly will actually be above the mesh here and you will get wet. I found that out the hard way one day. Uh, it wasn't so bad, but could have been worse. 
but uh, lesson learned. Right, just double checking. That's pretty, uh, pretty taut. And that's how you pitch the Nemo Aurora three-person tent. Show you a uh, walk around of this tent once it's pitched. So some features on the exterior. It's got the double vestibules and double doors. So it's got one door on each side. I've got uh, one of the doors uh, lashed to keep it open. It's also got several tie down points on the outside so you can guy it down if uh, conditions, um, you know, you need to do that because of excessive rain or winds or something. So it's got quite a few places to guy it down, which is nice. Underneath the fly, you've got these vent struts. So there are these rigid uh, pieces and they attach with Velcro. So you can set them up to get a little ventilation through the rain fly. Showed you the door lash. So it's got these door lashes, you know, just your standard uh, loop where it lashes through. So, you know, roll it up and then uh, take the strap from underneath and wrap it around and put it through and then you can tighten it up as needed. So now let's uh, take a look inside. Here's the interior of the Nebo Aurora three person. It's peak height in the middle is 44 inches. So that's how much clearance you got. Um, enough, you know, room for uh, somebody to uh, sit up if they want, but certainly not stand. I mean, maybe if they're like a, a little toddler or something. So this uh, interior has a few features. It's got your overhead light pocket. So it's kind of opaque. So if you put your headlamp in here, it'll kind of disperse the lighting for you. You've got gear pockets next to each door. Got a gear pocket here and another one over here. These can also double as a place to stuff the door if you want to keep the doors open. And then above the tent on uh, either end, we've got some gear pockets up top. That's also on both sides. Got uh, a couple loops so you can hang anything with a hook or carabiner. We've got two loops on the top on either side of the uh, light pocket. And then an interesting feature of this tent is on the four corners, you've got these button down points. So these button down points are actually for the Nemo paw print, which is sold separately. It's uh, kind of a floor that you can put in to give you extra protection against like uh, dog's claws or uh, you know, just to have a little carpet in here. If you want to see what the whole tent looks like filled with gear, be sure to check out the uh, DK Adventure Co. video, the lake camping and fishing. I had this tent set up and I have my bed and gear in here. Okay, so I know I said this tent retails for 359 US dollars, but believe it or not, it is actually what Nemo would consider a budget tent. It comes down, it's the uh, cheapest tent that they sell, the Aurora line. There's the two person and the three person. So the two person Aurora tent is the cheapest tent that Nemo sells, and this one's just above it for $60 more. So uh, as such, it does have some features cut from it. Um, that Nemo has on some of the newer tents. So they have, you know, like newer tubs that you can put in the vestibule. They have new materials. They have lighter poles that aren't on this one. This is actually the tent that they've had on the market the longest. It's actually the oldest tent that they still sell. Nemo actually sells another tent called the Nemo Impact, but it's actually the exact same structure and layout as the Aurora. Uh, it has everything that's the same. The only updates to it are the material. It's a different material, and it has some of the uh, updated features that aren't in this, like the gear tub. All right, let's talk uh, pros and cons for the tent. So first pro, it's got a ton of space. So as you can see, it certainly is very roomy. Uh, I mean, that's to be expected because they do advertise it as a uh, three person tent. Me personally, I like to solo camp in this thing when I go car camping, but uh, you certainly could comfortably fit, you know, an adult and a big dog or uh, two people and a small to medium sized dog. Three people, they advertise that you, you know, put your feet and head along long ways uh you know it's a little bit of a squeeze but uh, aren't all tents like that where the person uh capacity advertise usually want to go step below that for practical purposes unless you're real close or real pressed for space uh, another pro of this tent is the color i think the color is really nice it's not necessarily stealthy but i think it really pops and stands out uh, you know, I take this car camping. I'm not stealth camping or backpacking with this thing. So I don't think the color really matters all that much. 
Um, another pro of this tent and just all Nemo tents in general is that uh, Nemo is a great company. They make really high quality uh, camping gear. They make chairs, they make tents, they make sleeping bags. This is a really good company. Uh, you know, they are a little bit pushing the premium pricing with some of the camping stuff, but I think they make some really good products. And also they're a company on a mission. They support environmental initiatives and they uh, try to stay carbon neutral. And probably my biggest pro is that the Nemo Aurora tents all come with a footprint. That's right, this is not extra, it's included in the price. So it's a really good value. Surprisingly, this is the only tent that Nemo sells that has the footprint included. So your higher price tents that are four, $500, they don't come with the footprint. I really don't understand why more tents don't come with footprints. I think it's just a way to gouge you out of another 50 or 60 bucks. You know, you're dropping $500 on a tent the least you can do is throw the footprint. So I find that interesting that their cheapest tent has the footprint, but I would say that's a really big plus. I know in the backpacking and camping community, there's some level of debate on whether a footprint is necessary or not, but I think it's good to at least include it with the tent so that you can use the footprint if you want it or just ditch it if you don't. So you don't have to pay any extra if you want that footprint coverage under your tent. Let's talk cons. This tent isn't perfect. And my first con are the stakes that uh, come with this tent. I mean, these are just your basic stakes. They are pretty light, so it's not like what you're gonna get with a Walmart tent, but I'm not a fan of this type of stake. I just don't find them to be very durable or effective. You know, they'll bend or break after you use them for a couple trips. So my advice to you is replace these right away. I think that these stakes uh, feel kind of cheap and they point to Nemo, you know, cutting costs to keep this their budget tent, which we'll see as a pattern through some of these cons. Another con I think is that Nemo advertises this as a backpacking tent. I do not agree with that. And I don't think it's a backpacking tent at all. Look at the size of this thing. There's no way you're gonna take this backpacking with you. The only way I could see that being in the realm of possibility is if you had three backpackers and you split up the entire load between them, you know, one person carries the poles, one carries the fly, one carries the tent. Even still, that's a, a pretty big load because everyone's gonna be carrying, you know, a, a little over two pounds for that. Uh, and then you're gonna have a tight squeeze when you get to camp. So I guess that's why they technically call it a backpacking tent. I don't agree with that. I would not buy this for backpacking. I'd buy this for car camping. Another con and what is perhaps my biggest complaint with this tent are the zippers on the doors. So here's the zipper. Do you notice anything interesting? I had to loop all the way around because these only have a single zipper and it's not the highest quality. Um, the quality, you know, I haven't had it fail on me. I just feel like it could be a little brittle, but the main complaint is the one-way zipper. So if you want to open the door, you have to go all the way around. Now that might not seem like a chore, but let's say it's raining, you've got the fly down, you have to zip up the fly and then you have to come all the way in, all the way inside to reach the zipper. And then you have to go basically three quarters of the way around just to get enough open so you can get inside. The same principle applies if you're inside the tent, you have to zip it all the way back if you're gonna keep the bugs out. You know, you're in here sleeping, you wake up, you have nature's call, you have to grab the zipper and go all the way around this loop just to get out. You know, most tents have the double zipper for a reason. I would keep the double zipper here if they had it. And then, you know, you just do a little quarter movement and then you can step right out. But uh, I clearly see that as a cost cutting measure from Nemo to not include two zippers. It's the same case on both sides. So uh, this is kind of annoying when you're camping. I mean, it's not a, a deal breaker, but it's annoying. Most tents you find have the double zippers. The, another con with this is the price. $359 isn't exactly cheap. And that's with, uh, you know, everything I said earlier about it being Nemo's, you know, budget tent. Uh, this tent has been around a while. I'm pretty sure they have, you know, this down considering that they have another tent based on the structure. I think it'd be nice if they dropped the price on it a little bit considering how old the tent is. Uh, I mean, having said that, it often goes on sale. So if you pay attention to the sales that go around like REI, twice a year sale, Memorial Day, Labor Day, uh, you'll, you'll get some good deals on this. I actually got this particular tent at Backcountry. I paid $260 for it. So I think that was a pretty good deal. If the tent retail for 250, I think that would be a great deal. And I would recommend it to anybody trying to take that step above, you know, your basic tents. 359 might be a stretch, but if you wait for it on sale, you can probably get a good deal. 
Hey, JR here, uh, just kind of giving a comparison. So we had the Nemo 3 person over here that we've been looking at today. Um, I actually just happen to have the Nemo Aurora 2 person. Um, like we've kind of talked about, the three person definitely is not a backpacking tent and it's kind of advertised as such. This one obviously is also advertised as such. Uh, it is on the heavier side, I believe it's just over five pounds. And the price, I believe the retail is about $300. Uh, again, like the other one, you can get it on sale, probably get it around 230 or so, and it's a good deal, but I'd say for backpacking, maybe it is a little on the heavier side. Uh, this was actually my first tent that I got for backpacking, so I'm fine with it, but I think, you know, given what I know now with the weight and everything and what others kind of cost, I may go with something different, maybe a little lighter, but otherwise, I have no real complaints about the tent. It's been great, and I will continue using it until it dies. So we're looking at the inside of the two-person, kind of just in comparison to the three-person. Obviously, I'm a little bit bigger of a guy. I'm about 6'1", uh, probably about 280 right now. Um, you know, sitting up, got good headroom. I don't hit the top. It's got all the same, you know, gear nets and everything, light top. Um, laying down, it's got a, got a good length. So, you know, if you're a bigger person and you want a big backpacking tent that's a little heavier, works out. Um, totally fine for the size. Final thoughts on the Nemo Aurora tents. Despite my complaints, I think it's a really good tent. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for backpacking, like I said, but for car camping, it's been excellent. If you solo camp, I think it's an amazing tent for that. You can have plenty of room, no matter how big you are, to spread out, have a really nice bed system set up, have all your gear in there. Plus, you got the vestibules on either side. I've gone camping a few times in various types of weather, and I've never had any problems. I've never had water get in. I, I've uh, you know slept in this during thunderstorm conditions in uh, winter with extreme cold and wind conditions. Never had a problem in this tent. I think it's a fantastic tent. So if you keep in mind the caveats, I don't think that any of them are necessarily uh, deal breakers. The one thing probably is the price depending on on your budget but i think if you look out for a sale and you're wanting to level up beyond the you know basic uh ozark trail and uh, big box store tents take a look at nemo stuff they make really high quality products everything is great it stands the test of uh, you know getting out there and also didn't mention this before, but Nemo has a lifetime warranty on all of their products. So if something screws up on your tent, you can contact Nemo and they'll send you replacement parts, no questions asked. So I think it's a wholehearted recommendation from me here at DK Adventure Co. And uh, check out the Nemo tents. Like I said, it's not sponsored, but I'll put a link down to the tent below so you can see the full specs. So I hope you uh, learned a good bit about this tent if you were thinking of checking it out from us. Definitely a wholehearted recommendation from DK Adventure Co. So until next time, see you later.